it's me and Mo. We're back with a new episode of Since You Asked. Let's get right into the questions. I like this font. All right. Hey, Keisha and Mo. All right. She wrote hers. This is the type of font that you use to write us, people. Oh, my gosh. She spaced it out. It's wonderful. Hey, Keisha and Mo. I'm a 42-year-old married woman with no kids. I have a 40-year-old friend with two kids who is single and dating. She always asks me for advice because she says she wants to be married. Mind you, she titled this, I Think My Friend is a Narcissist. Okay. That probably are. <laughs> Okay, she always asks me for advice because she says she wants to be married. I'm like, why? I always tell her I haven't dated in over 10 years when my husband and I were separated and the game was very different then. No IG, no Facebook, no phones with cameras, thank God. The men were different and we were younger, so my advice may be a little antiquated. She doesn't care. She says she trusts my judgment and she needs my help because she doesn't know what she's doing wrong out here. Okay, that's what she said. She has no problem picking up men or catching a date, but keeping them is a different story. The relationship never lasts past a month because before they have a huge fight slash breakup. She is not selective when it comes to these men. They hit her up on IG. They go out and every time she says he could be the one. That's the problem. Every last one of them. She can never tell me what she likes about these men. She likes them because they like her. That's the problem. I try and tell her to date, hang out with these cats, get to know them, see if y'all have fun together. I think she does way too much with these Bamas. And I think she tells them too much of her business. To sum it up, I think she's very clingy, very immature, and very petty with these men. They are grown-ass men she's dating, and she's playing high school games out here. She got mad at one dude she was feeling because he had his friends over and didn't want to talk to her on the phone because he had company. <clears throat> Me personally, I might would feel the same type of way that while I'm hanging with my friend, she immediately gets pissed in him a text message that she was going out on a date and he would have fun with his friend. When he didn't respond that way she wanted him to, I guess to call her and argue about it, she sent him a long text message full of typos and misused words saying she was done with him. Blocked him on her phone, Facebook, and Instagram. At this point, they had been talking for about three weeks. Oh, That's God. And this is the pattern with every guy. She stressed this. And the very same pattern. They may be doing something without her. She gets mad, tries to make them jealous, and things go left. I think she jumps into bed with them too quickly, like the first date. Don't get me wrong. If the attraction is there, don't fight it. But make him work for it a little bit. Just don't put it out on a plate for him because he smiled at you. She constantly begs. You can't stand her. She constantly begs and demands my advice, and she doesn't listen. Stop giving it, girl. At one point after I told her about herself, she told me, you are married. You don't know shit. I have tried talking to her in a calm, spiritual, loving manner. I have just tried talking. <laughs> mean, you mean the marriage? Does she want to be she right? On this? You, okay, here. I have tried just telling her about herself with some harshness. I have tried just listening and saying, mm -hmm, "Okay, girl." She has lost several girlfriends over her silliness. I think it's me and maybe one other chick left. My point is, I can't take this no more, and I'm ready to cut her off. I cannot listen to this same shit no more. It is the same behavior with different men. I want to tell her to leave me the fuck alone, you stupid ass with these niggas, and I don't want her. And I don't want to hear no more of this shit. But she's my friend. I can't say that to her because I love her, but I can't take this. I cringe when I see her number she's cool oh, as hell damn. she's cool as hell when she's not dealing with the man what would you do because what what i'm doing ain't working for me anonymous love y'all love you too girl Ooh. since you asked monique i would have to tell her could you be friends with her because i couldn't because she would get on my fucking nerves you know what it depends on uh how long I, it, it would it would have it would have to It'd be yeah, so many factors. Is, like yeah. how long? Is she a new friend? That you because I got some friends that's been around for thirty years <laughs> that I'm just like, bitch, we met last week. <laughs> we would not be talking today. So, um, true that. Yeah. I mean, I would just set up. If you want to continue the friendship, I would just have to set a boundary with her where I can't talk to you about your relationship shit no more. Yeah. Because I've tried to talk to you about it. You don't listen. I don't want to hear shit about it. Leave she ain't got no problem telling you you don't know shit, so I wouldn't have no problem telling yeah, exactly. her you right, so I don't want to hear nothing else about it. And I mean it. Like, stand on that shit. Even if she try, bitch, nope, call you back. Hang up, literally. Mm -hmm. Be busy. Yeah. But I know how that feels to cringe when somebody calls you. Every time my mother. Calls <laughs> me. Um, so, yeah. Uh, you just got to set a boundary with her. Because she's an idiot. She's an idiot. She's an idiot. It's not even that she's a narcissist. She's an idiot. She's immature as fuck. She's insecure. Yeah. That's what she is. Yeah. She's crazy. And y'all kick it every now and then or whatever. Go and have drinks. Go to TGI Fridays or whatever. Get you a nice little meal. But that two for ten or whatever. And keep it moving. 
but you can't fool with her on any other level other than that. Yeah, don't ask your phone at eight, right? Cause she gonna have your answer by Charlamagne guys always tells you you can't talk to niggas after five o'clock. <laughs> you just literally can't, and I don't take that advice. So send us an update, please. <laughs> Send us an update, please. Next question says BS Love Triangle. All right, what is this? Hi, my. Mm, you telling us your name. I don't know if you're new to this and you don't want me to say your name, but I'm just going to call you Nikki. Hi, my name is Nikki. I want to say I absolutely love you and Mo. However, I need y'all help because I'm in a bullshit ass love triangle. In late 2014, the man who I consider to be my best friend for 11 years, I'll call him X, and I decided we wanted to be together. He basically has been chasing me for three years prior to 2014, and although I was in love with him, I didn't want to mess up the friendship. Although we lived in two different states, we he, we pursued this, and things were going great, as always in the beginning. However, six months into our... However, six months into our relationship, <laughs> I was notified that my job was relocating and it just so happened to be in his area. Oh, Lord, you found out about all the other bitches. I jumped on opportunity, but also found it to be a plus because of him and the future we discussed. Fast forward, not even two months into moving, I'm hating the job, homesick, and later found out that not only has he been cheating on me with his daughter's mother, but has also proposed to her. He begged me not to leave him and gave me every excuse in the book. But once I found all this out, I was done with him. Although I was... So, this is just like my book. Oh my God, mm -hmm. this is perfect. Although I was so hurt and destroyed, I felt more betrayed just because of the years of being friends mm -hmm. to now find out that basically it was nothing, girl. Over time, I was getting over him, taking time for myself, finished my master's and started my own company. Congratulations, bitch. Lemonade. However, in between all those good things, he was still constantly coming around, still begging. I eventually found one thousand percent better job back in our hometown, so I went back home. I started dating again, taking everything slow, and met a man. I'll call him A. Great guy with the with the career and good head on his shoulders compared to my ex, who's in his thirties, not trying to grow up, but rather hustle on the streets. Girl, I can slap you already. A and I have been going good on the dating part, and now he has made it clear he wants something more and sees that with me however once he makes this clear to me my exercise will pop back up in our hometown for good girl they always do that's the devil girl he states he has moved back here and is going to do whatever it is to take to win me back i can admit as i have to a and myself i'm now 100 percent over my ex girl shut up simply because of our history but i don't know if i should attempt to work things out with my ex or just get over it and keep it pushing monique we're what out why is he back? He got caught up on a drill tour mm -hmm. somewhere. It ain't because you know they about to put his ass out because he found out about you and probably other bitches. Right, girl. What about this nigga? Do you want? You just said he immature. He don't keep a job. He out here trying to sell dope. And he thirty. What about this man? Do you want to have a future with? He a liar. He a cheater. And y'all associated. That would make me not even want to fuck with him even more than a nigga that I didn't even know prior to dating, and we just dated. That's a long ass friendship. Exactly. He for him to do that to you. That shows he never was your fucking friend in the first if place. If he can't get it together in 11 motherfucking years, he ain't finna get it together in that little bit of time since y'all for you. Up. Niggas don't change. Mm -mm. That fast especially. No. He was never your friend, girl. You was just a bitch that he was cool with. That he wanted to fuck for years. And you finally gave in. And that's what it was. Because maybe you were bored. And then maybe you just started liking this nigga because you were bored and didn't have nothing else to do. Maybe you love him as a friend. You just don't... I don't even know what the fuck it is, but I'm telling you this: want him. the guy that's really into you, don't waste his time. And you gonna fuck it up. You gonna fuck it up, and you gonna be over there crying when you go back to this nigga, or if you have it. Cause don't waste his, his time because regardless of what we tell you to do, you're going to do what you want to do anyway. Because you're not <clears> completely <throat> over this motherfucker, you'll be wasting his time. You are gonna go back to him. Something gonna happen. Y'all gonna fuck something. Thing is going to happen. So this good guy, let him go on about his business. Because you, you ain't ready for that. 26. So by the time this come out, it'll be a full month since you sent this to us. Yeah. So and even if you if you do get over your ex because you just doing something so that you ain't thinking about your goddamn ex because that's really what you're doing whether you know that or not. It ain't gonna be this guy because you don't like him for real. Yeah, because if you was 100% into this man, he wouldn't even be able to look your way. If you was really no into question. this man, we wouldn't have got no question. Exactly. Period. Next question. Subject. I can't stand my family. What to do? Oh, Lord, it's a long one. 
Let me get ready. Hello, queens. Like most family, my family has had many issues over the year. To give you a little background as a child, oh, Lord, here we go. I remember my mother and my aunt falling out, but I did not ever involve myself. <laughs> I still engaged. Y'all be telling us all the side stories. Can y'all, I mean, we love y'all. We love them, but y'all got to get to the point. Because we don't need to know about your auntie and who she fucked in 1972. Um, all right. Auntie fall now, but I did not ever involve myself. I still engaged with my aunt, even though my mother and her went in and out of being on bad terms. My aunt is financially successful and likes to rub it in everyone's face. I didn't learn until I was in my 20s that even though she looked out by buying my first car, which I was very grateful for, but as soon but I soon learned that she was one of those folks that did things for people for partially good reasons, but to also say that she did it. Oh, we know them people. But I'm still grateful that she did it for me. When I got, got into business with my aunt, I found out how judgmental and bitter she was more and more i started to see how fake her and the rest of the family are we would go over to their house for holidays and one day it would be a all family and love then the next day they would be turning their noses up like they didn't want us there my aunt has a daughter my cousin who i was very close with but the older she got the more she became influenced by my mother by her mother after a while, I told my mother that I was tired of their fake evil ways and wanted to distance myself. So I started hanging out with my friends and their families during the holidays because I can't be around fake people. It is very difficult. After that, my mother was diagnosed with cancer. Oh, when my aunt heard that, when I heard this, she offered to find my mother a good doctor and be the primary transportation to her treatment appointments. Because I had just had my daughter and worked full time, I was grateful again, thinking maybe this is a wake up call to my aunt because. She has the means. She wants to look out for her sister and I will go to as many appointments and of course be there for my mother for any of her needs as well. I was wrong. After my mother went into remission and her cancer was gone, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, we learned that my aunt felt some type of way about helping my mother. Mm. One day after a family gathering at my aunt's, the shit hit the fan. After I... After I left to go home, my mother stayed back at my aunt's and a heated argument started. My cousin started going off on my mom saying that because they had to take her to treatments and appointments, my mom lost money and it caused their family stress and that me, her daughter, should have quit her job to take care of her mom. Well, my mother didn't tell me about this argument because my mother knows that I don't play about her and I would have checked their passive aggressive asses. And why did you hoes wait till I left to bring that up? Also, why did you offer to take my mother to her treatments and it started to be stressful? Why the hell didn't someone call me and say, I thought I could do this, but you need to step in and I would have made it happen. A week after this argument, I noticed my cousin blocked me on Facebook. I was thinking like, oh, wow, I am, I am really hurt not really lol lol too grown to care but i want to know what was going on so i asked my mom has she talked to them and she said no and finally broke down and not only told me about the argument but also told but also that she told my brother and he called my aunt and ripped her ass a new uh, ripped her a new asshole saying she would be she should be ashamed of herself for complaining about helping with her sister and he said he had a whole lot of other things I won't divulge, but just say he read her to supreme filth, which was years of holding in her and calling her on her bullshit. So because of all that, we did not talk to him for over a year. During that time, my mother's cancer came back. Oh, Lord. And unfortunately, it was terminal. Oh, God. He, I decided at that time, at that time, it would be the right thing to do to reach out to my aunt and tell her what's going on. She went to see my mom a few times. During that time, my mother literally moved three stoplights down from my aunt. And during the three months that my mom lived, oh, after I told my aunt she was not going to make it, she only visited her three times and it bothered my mom. I even called my aunt as I was sitting with my mom on her dying day to let her know that she had time to come see my mother before she passed and she didn't come. After my mom's passing, my, any animosity I had or fucks for them died with my mother. My aunt was of course at the funeral and since she has been trying to reach out and to be involved in my life, I am tired of telling this lady that I can't make it to any of her invites because I can't tell she has not because I because I can tell she has not changed. Everyone keeps saying that it's family, so I should try to work it out. My cousin and I are cool now because I can tell she misses our bond, but I'm really over my aunt and her people at this point. I now have two children that they want to see and be a part of their lives but I really don't want to be bothered my question is should I be around them even though I really don't want to or is it okay to stop fucking with them all together thanks and advice for the advance first off sorry I'm, about your passing I'm, of your mother yeah I'm very sorry about the passing of your mother um 
As far as family goes, we all <coughs> got an Aunt Terry. <laughs> I got aunts like that. That I, I don't care to be around, but I love them to death. And my thing is life is short. I wouldn't want a time to come where something would happen to either one of you guys and you didn't spend time to heal old wounds and shit like that. I'm sure your mom, if she had a chance, I don't know. I, somebody has to be the bigger person. Just because you forgive somebody, you talk to them, does not mean you have to be around them. My motto is, like people say, I can't deal with certain people. There's not a person I can't deal with. Once I see people who, for who they are, I know how to deal with them. Yeah. You can't be around her all of the time. I agree and disagree. Um, I personally feel like with everything that's going on with your family and now that you've seen how your auntie operates, I'm sorry, I'm hungry. <laughs> but she's one of those people that wants to help but then act like it's such a burden on her and want to talk behind your back and feel like she's better than everybody else and like y'all just need her and just so fucking destitute and this isn't it because I, I do have family members like that um I personally like Mo I agree with Monique was saying you can forgive her um and keep it moving but I'm just one of those people where I don't want to be bothered with you I'm not going to be bothered with you and if you cause nothing but drama and I know the drama is going to come if I could you know fool with you I know eventually the shoe was going to drop and you're going to be on some bullshit again. I wouldn't be around it. I would, you know, forgive her and keep it moving. Because you are, I'm already knowing where this is going to go. If you decide to, you know, so I come back around again, you're going to let her help with something and then here it go again. Or her daughter ain't, you know, the daughter ain't, you ain't shit, you don't do it. I just say don't fuck with them. I just don't. If you I don't even really get that heavily involved with them. I'm talking about you could have a conversation with her over the phone. That only still means you got to go over there and you could cut it short. I'm gonna tell you. After seven on Sunday tonight, girl, I can't wait. Um, <laughs> ooh, baby, <laughs> ah, I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you some more. Every little thing that I got. Oh, okay. Is yours. <laughs> Okay, back to the question. Sorry. Um, I agree. You can have just a conversation with her. Just say hi on Christmas. But I just wouldn't fuck with her. I'm sorry. Especially if you... I'm sorry, Monique. You don't come on my mama dying, birth, dead. No. I'm sorry. That's something I can forgive you, bitch. But I never fuck with you like that again. No, bitch. Sorry. Bye for bitch. I'm gonna give a fuck if you is my auntie. Nope. Sorry. Love her with a long handle stool spoon. See her on Christmas. Hey, girl. Hey, girl. And keep it moving. That's what I say. That's the auntie when you know you go over the family house for Christmas. You just say hey everybody. So you ain't necessarily got to speak directly to Yeah. Them. Hey everybody. How y'all doing? Okay. Y'all got some cobbler? Some peach pie? Alright. How everybody doing? Everybody I'll take right? cousin favorite you every time. Yeah. So let us know what you decide to do. And thank you for the question. We have one last question. And then we have a dirty little secret y'all. So this one says... Hi, Keisha Mo. Hope both you ladies are doing well. I'm 24 years old. I live at home with my mom and stepdad, which allows me to save money. February of last year, I went against my better judgment and did something I know that I shouldn't have. A friend of mine okay, was having some financial difficulties, and I loaned her upwards of $1,400. Oh, hell no. And I also co-signed for her car. I know I'm stupid and my mom doesn't know. Your mom gonna whoop your ass. This is supposed to be temporary, approximately six months. I was to have my money back and take my name off her car. Girl, you a fuck. Shortly after she decided to move to the South to save money. During this time, she went on vacation and got engaged to a guy that she, that she knew when she was younger. This guy was living with his baby mother and young baby. This the guy lives in Jamaica. She wasn't even in the South six months. When her and the roommate got into it and the roommate disappeared, leaving her to pay the fee for the breaking the lease. Long story short, it's now been a year. I have not received any of my money. Of course you haven't. And my name is still on the car. It has also affected my credit. I have creditors called because she was unemployed for about two months and was not able to pay the car payment. She has been back on her feet for a while now, working two jobs over at the bank full time and a freelancing 
and freelancing for a cosmetic brand part time. She is not planning her wedding and she wants to be wants me to be a bridesmaid. Absolutely not. The wedding is August 2017. I would like to be a supportive friend, but I can't every time we talk. She tells me what she bought for the wedding and how much things cost. The wedding is going to be in Jamaica, so it's not going to be cheap. Girl, you I, I am not a confirmation confrontational person. I don't know what to do. Can you please give me any advice on how to resolve the situation? I know it will end the friendship, and I'm prepared for that to happen. Thank you in advance. Keep up the good work. You ladies are both so inspirational and beautiful inside and out. Thank you Thank so much. You. You're a cutie pie. Moni, get her. <laughs> you know what? I learned a long time ago. No. You don't give people shit unless you can give it to them. Never. Yeah, you ain't got to worry about getting, getting it back. back. Yeah. And as far as co-signing for something, that is something huge. A friend, first of all, the fact she had to come and ask you as a friend and could not ask any of her family members. You, let you, you know. That, you, that lets you know that something is wrong here. If mommy and daddy or grandma or auntie and uncle will not co-sign for you, then something is wrong. They know that you hella irresponsible. Why would you do that? You are too young for this shit, girl. Why would you fuck up your shit like that? Girl, she ain't worried about life. She finna got her husband from Jamaica. He finna come over. He getting ready to come over and eat her ass out of a house and home. And you think that you ain't, she ain't paying that car no now. You got money. How you gonna sit up on the phone and tell me you paying for a wedding, a destination wedding, you ain't paying me back my money? You oh, bold, bold as hell. That's bold as hell. You bold in a motherfucker. Yeah. You could possibly end up getting um, a repossession in your name if Oof. if they take the car from her. Um, you too, and you so young. Like you ain't lived. You ain't even left your parents' house since you've been saving what money, you and you didn't let somebody else fuck up your credit. And you ain't even left the nest yet. You gotta bite the bullet and tell your parents what you did, so they can help you out this situation. I mean, I'm ready to help you out the situation. I don't know what you're gonna do. You have to, the my advice to you is. You probably gonna have to chalk up that uh fourteen hundred dollars as yeah, a loss. Chalk that up as hell. That's not, yeah, and get the car back. So you and pay on it yourself, so at least you can build your credit back up. Because she ain't worried about your credit. She ain't worried about your credit. And another thing you got to do is stop getting on the phone, cackling with her motherfucking yeah. ass, and making her think that everything. Why would you okay? be a bridesmaid in her damn wedding, giving her more money? You paying more shit for this girl? You have to pay for her dress, the hotel, the air fryer, the shoes, your rhinestones. Girl, no. No! You ain't got the... Girl, no! If she get the car back, can she, like, sell it? Or she got to keep it until she pay it off? She can sell it. You, like, do that. Get it and sell it, bitch. Since it's being financed, though. Oh. Well, I don't know about no car. I, it's no gonna, car. I mean, since it's being financed, she probably upside down and alone, especially since, um... Since she ain't, uh, paying the damn notes on it all the time. Girl. <sighs> That's so fucked up. Is but no, I'm talking about she need to tell her parents so they can help her to get the car back because she probably don't know how the fuck to do it. Yeah, you're going to have to say you're going to have to bite the bullet. They're going to cuss your ass the fuck out. you going to get some dirty looks. Mom might even threaten to put your ass out. She might be a dumb ass. <laughs> your mom going to cuss you out. You need to get cussed out because that was stupid as fuck. Don't ever do that shit again. I can already tell though that you that nice friend. That's why she knew Yeah, that's why she you. played you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you look, look at that face. Mm -hmm. Girl, you just sweet and angelic. She just played on them big doe eyes. Girl, mm -hmm. don't ever do that again. Let us know what happened, girl. Please let us know what happened. No. Alright, so we have a dirty little secret. This one says, hey ladies, my dirty little secret is I am junky. I don't know how it started, but all I do know is all of a sudden it takes me weeks, sometimes months to throw shit away. I hate mail, so I go through and pull out the usual three important items and let it pile up. Then I place it into plastic bags. Why? But I don't throw the bags away. I move them around. I keep the grocery circulars for weeks. Why? I look at them online. LOL. Now for my bedroom. OMG, I love to eat in bed and I love different hot sauces and spices. On my nightstand, you may find two to three bottles of hot sauce, a jar of mustard, some soy sauce packets, some garden what is that? Gardenia peppers in a cup, a few plastic forks and knives, a cup for tea, and a glass of water. A glass for water. My kitchen and bathroom are straight, can't stand a jacked up kitchen or nasty bathroom. Because you shit you eating in your room. But the maneuvering that I do with my living room and bedroom should be illegal. Laugh out loud. After a while, I can no longer take it. I go through like a crackhead working for a rock and clean that bitch like crazy. It will stay that way for about a month and it's chill on sin at it again. And that is my dirty little secret. Shh. Love y'all. Okay. 
Girl, you gotta stop eating in your room like that and leave shit. You gonna, that's See, a roach and that's gonna really get your ass scared. <laughs> right, you see a roach, it's gonna be time to move because you know them motherfuckers is not dying. <laughs> yeah, you gotta stop that. Because you like semi got hoarder like potential. Okay, so that was it for this episode. If you have a dirty little secret, email us at dirtylittlesecrets at gmail.com. And if you have a question for me and Mo, please send it to sensuax1 at gmail.com. We look forward to your questions. Thank you all so much for watching this video. And we will see you on the next one. Bye.